Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to install the kit I've developed to add a USB-C port to your AirPods Pro. This tutorial is just to show you how I do things and you should always follow the latest written instructions. Link in the description. The kit is compatible with case model number A2190. If your case says assembled in Vietnam on the back, there is special instructions for you and you need to read the written tutorial. You will need the following tools. A vise. Here I'm using a Stanley 83069, but you can use any vise. Just make sure you can open the jaws wide enough to fit the 61 mm length of the case. Ideally, your vise has soft rubber jaws. Mine has nice removable ones. If you don't have soft jaws, you can use metal jaws and protect your case with masking tape. You also need a Torx T4 screwdriver. T5 also works. If you have a magnetizer, it would make your life much easier, but it's optional. You need a small quantity of isopropyl alcohol. Make sure you get 99% purity or above. Sometimes if you get it from a pharmacy or drugstore, they can sell you 60% purity and it's really not great for electronics. You need a pair of fine tweezers, a guitar pick, I found that those Ernie Ball Everlast 0.73mm were great. This is included with the PCB so you don't need to buy it. As an option, you can get a hot hair gun or heat gun or hair dryer or whatever and also some glue for example hot glue works great but this is also optional okay let's get started let me show you what we are trying to achieve we want to break the glue bonds especially around those plastic teeth clamp your case sideways make sure you removed the airpods buds and that the lid is open we want to start closing the jaws to apply pressure on the case that pressure will create two small gaps between the middle frame and the outer shell once you have a gap big enough to fit the guitar pick you can insert it and slide the guitar pick on the side as shown. This will break the glue bond. Now we rotate the case 90 degrees and clamp it in the vise. Make sure you leave a 10 mm gap on top of the jaws. Insert your guitar pick in front of the device and slide it sideways until you reach slightly further than the extremity of the case. I found that doing this wave motion really helps. about this far. Add a few drops of IPA so that it flows through the gaps you just created and let it sit for 30 seconds. Repeat the same procedure for the other side. Once the 30 seconds are done, this time don't remove the guitar pick. Instead, try to push it slightly further. You can rotate the case 180 degrees and tighten the vise. What we want to do is to keep the guitar pick in that gap and continue making our way to the back of the case. As soon as you can, you will want to partially close the lid and push the guitar pick behind the lid. Go as far back as you can. Then drop some IPA and wait 30 seconds. You can also try to slide the guitar pick along the hinge. Just don't go in too deep as the wireless charger is there. Repeat the same procedure for the other side. While I do this, quick shout out to PCBWay for producing those amazing panels. I'm always amazed that they work on the first try. I used to send them the files for only one PCB, but now for production, I created this panel of 12 PCBs. Can't wait to show you how I turned them into a finished product. Once you're done, if everything went fine, you should be able to lift out the assembly by gently rocking left and right the lid with an added upwards motion. You really shouldn't need to use too much force, because if you do, you might rip off the flex cables connected to the main board. If you feel like you're using too much force, just start over and go a bit further with the guitar pick. 
Here it's optional, but I recommend it. You can heat up the glue around the two connectors. I'm using a hot air gun at 120 degrees for maximum 45 seconds, but if you're using a hairdryer, just heat it up a little bit to soften the glue. With your tweezers, I recommend only removing the glue first and then disconnecting the connectors. Watch out not to rip off any SMD components next to the connectors. We now have the bottom shell separated and can remove the two Torx T4 screws holding the lightning connector. The connector is weakly held by glue and you can push it back and forth to remove it. You also need to unglue the LED. Then you can push the metal slot out with your screwdriver. Now we install the new USB-C connector. We start by bending it correctly so we don't have issues later. The LED should bend down and the B2B connector should bend up. We also need to bend the flex cable near the B2B connector. There are two white lines on the PCB acting as guides. You need to bend the flex PCB where those lines are. The white line is always inside the bend. Do not bend the PCB completely flat. Add a small radius to your bend. It might tear if you don't add a small radius to your bend. The final bend should look like an S and the connector should be facing out. Place the metal spacer provided in a slot at the bottom of the case. If you want, you can use some of the red double-sided tape that came with the PCB to secure the spacer. Do not use more than two-thirds of the tape, you will need some later. Place the USB-C connector while making sure the B2B connector is facing where the hinge slot is located and the LED is facing the other side. You can place the two T4 screws back and start to screw them in, but don't go all the way. This is where the optional magnetizer comes in handy. It makes it much easier to place the screws. Now we connect a USB-C cable and then we tighten the screws. This is to make sure that everything is lined up properly. Disconnect the USB-C cable. Secure the LED in its slot with a piece of double-sided tape. Make sure the flexible PCB is straight. Slide back in the top assembly and connect the two B2B connectors. Plug back in the USB-C cable and make sure it is charging and everything works well. Here you can optionally add some glue to the B2B connectors. Make sure the USB-C B2B connector bends properly, so that's the S shape we mentioned before, and the other connector should bend in a similar way. Now you can close the whole thing and hopefully you're done. Congrats! So as an update, I've shipped all the orders and you can still purchase the kit with a shorter lead time now. Thank you for your patience and your support and see you next time. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay, peace.